Welcome to another episode of Shore Leave, where these two sailors are taking a chance to kick back, absorb the local color, talk about some non-Sailor Moon topics. I'm your host, Caliban. I'm your co-host, Mikan Hana. And we're here to sip up some Mai Tais. <laughs> yeah, right? Mai Tais. That's, I think that's my go-to, that's your go-to like, thing. Shore Leave drink that yes. I just always pull right out of my brain. Do you know what's in a Mai Tai? No clue. Some I'm, Mai and some Thai. I'm going right? to try to... Yeah, I'm going to try to tell you what's in a Mai Tai right okay. now. Uh, white rum, dark okay. rum, uh, curacao. Okay. Uh, like not Akira Kurosawa. What is curacao? Uh, it's a liqueur. Okay. Uh, it is uh, flavored with uh, bitter orange. Uh, okay. And then, and you don't get this very often because bars don't have this really, but uh, something called uh, orja, which is an almond syrup enhanced with uh, oh. a touch of flower water. And that's how you get the real taste of the islands in there. Huh. Okay. Yeah. I think maybe I want to change my drink to a daiquiri. I'm thinking that's maybe more my my speed. A daiquiri? Yeah. Yeah. Is that or, a frozen daiquiri? Yeah. Oh, totally frozen. Or a hurricane, which is just a daiquiri if you're in New Orleans, more or less. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Yeah. Those are dangerous. Those uh, I, I think we've talked about it before, but like I think we have talked about it before. Yeah, but when I was in New Orleans, you can just walk around and like yeah, carry yeah, your yeah. hurricane, and you're like, oh, this is so. It and it's it doesn't taste strongly like alcohol, so you're like, I can have another one, and yeah. it's like, wow. And then in your mugshot, your mouth is all red and right, right. Of yeah, course, yeah. you've got you know the adult like Kool Aid mustache thing going on. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 That's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a Kool-Aid mustache, officer. Yeah. Well, uh, welcome to people watching on Twitch and YouTube, and thanks for joining us for this little experiment. And uh, like I said, it is an experiment, so let us know if there is uh, any issues uh, with the technical side. You know, we're still working things out, but I think we've got it down. Yes. Uh, we're going to try to stream some of these shore leaves. It's our monthly show that we do at the end of the show, and we'll be uh, looking at the chat and everything throughout the show. So if you haven't yet... Why not take this chance to subscribe to us here on Twitch by hitting the heart icon and click the bell icon too, so that way you know that we're no, uh, you can get notified when we're live and broadcasting in the future. Uh, same thing goes for YouTube. Uh, give us a sub on YouTube if you haven't yet, because it just helps. It helps with the algorithm. Absolutely uh, helps. Engagement. Uh, and all that kind of thing. It uh, helps the YouTube trolls know that you're watching. We all talk like robots now. That's our future. <laughs> uh, when you get a chance, you can check out our About page here on Twitch uh, or our channel page on YouTube. That's got more information about what we're into. Uh, we've got a donation link, too, as well. If you want to send us a, tw a tip on Twitch or a super chat on YouTube, that would be so amazing. It would be fantastic. Uh, let's set, No, we're not setting sail. Let's do the opposite of setting sail Ooh. and get this thing started. Oh, okay. Uh, and surely if we talk about topics that are, you know, not necessarily related to uh, anime uh, right. or Sailor, uh, Sailor Moon, uh, although we do sometimes, um, Japanese-related topics, or just what's on our mind and what's on your mind this week, Nikon Hana? Well, um, so... I don't know if you know this, Cal, but the last couple of shore leaves that I've done have been kind of depressing or, yeah, you know, know not really fun. So I thought I'd flip that. Okay. And I thought we could talk about Japanese mascots. Sure. Um, What's behind all that? What's up, what's up with that? What's up with that? Yeah. Um, so uh, I wanted, so I don't know if we're going to find all the answers. Uh, but we're going to find some. So Yuruchara is uh, the Japanese term for, a, for it's like a category of mascot. And I feel like it's usually, that term specifically usually is referring to the mascots that are for a certain area. And it could be like a prefecture or a city, that sort of thing. Um, but it I f it's a little confusing because I think it can also be for an organization, but Yuruchara specifically um, are different in a lot of ways from um, 
mascots that are designed professionally, if that makes sense. Sense. So if you're um, you're a Japanese baseball team and you got a guy with a big baseball head or something like that, yeah. is that a Yurichara or is that so more official? I think that's that's more official. Like baseball is more official, and see, this is where I think I think Yurichara is really more. It's it's amateur the like designers uh, creators, what have you. Right. Okay. Um, so if I just put on like a costume. I call it my Tai Chan, and yeah. I make the mouth red, and then I start running around the street. Uh, that's a Yurichara. Yes. Okay, good. Exactly. Good. Uh, so the name Yurichara is, it's a contraction. We love combining words, as we know, in Japanese culture. Absolutely. Um, I love it. Yeah, I love it, too. Of uh, you, uh, Yurui mascot, it's it's like Yurui mascot character. So the adjective yurui generally means loose. Uh, and but it but in this particular um, combination and connotation, it could also mean gentle or weak, <laughs> laid back, okay, lighthearted or even unimportant. So <laughs> there you go. And these uh, all apply. These all these okay. all apply. I mean, and not to this every. This guy's loose, but I don't know how he seems pretty important. He's though, important at the same time. But but this one this one is loose, but but unimportant. Yeah, no. That's so not a big they, deal. they don't really not matter. That one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So um, but all forty seven prefectures have their own promotional mascot. Um, but it's not limited to just one. Like you could have more than. A lot of prefectures have more than one, but they have one official one. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, sort of the, the Captain America of their mascot Avengers. Right. Right. And, like, so, uh, basically, this can become a problem if with all the unofficial ones. Um, and one of the ones that really sticks out is Osaka. Has a lot. Um <laughs> And apparently it's a little problematic. Okay. In uh, 2014, the Osaka government expressed concern. Oh, my God. That there were too many local mascots. Hold on. And it wait, was, wait. <laughs> yes. <too many. laughs> yes. And it was, get this. This is the, the Osaka government saying it was diluting brand identity. Okay. Diluting. Yeah. Not diluting. Okay. Diluting. <laughs> no, no. Excuse you didn't me. say it wrong. I just, yeah. It would yeah. be bad to delude the brand identity. Yeah, right. So I thought this was a sex shop. <laughs> this is a cotton candy place? What the hell? Okay, yeah. But it's so, it's like, leave it to Japan to be, because, I mean, obviously, yeah, you, you have a mascot. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it is branding, right? So, but, like, it's... So is there an official office? Because, uh, you know, government, um, municipal government is bureaucracy. Uh, yeah. And the Japanese love bureaucracy. They absolutely love bureaucracy. So there has to be, they like, so many papers for an so many office things. of the mascot. You know, the, 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 the person who's the, the brand manager for the mascot. Does the mascot have I'm, an email? That is, these are all... Fantastic question. Can you eat my 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 Tai Chan Ooh. at? Uh... See, that's a honestly, that's a great marketing idea. I like where you're going with this, Cal. All right, we'll cut this. We cut this. Part okay. Out. <laughs> cut it out. Okay. But uh, so the the term uh, came from an illustrator and cultural critic, uh, June Miuri, uh, excuse me, Miura, in the early 2000s, and. Um, I guess like originally it had kind of a negative connotation, but it over the years it, it that has gone away, and now everybody is like thumbs up. Okay. This is awesome. All right. Um, and Miura has stated that there are three main requirements that make Yuruchara. So you, you have to have all three of these. Okay. Uh, so it must convey a strong message of love for one's hometown or local region. Uh, number two, the character's movements or behavior should be unique and unstable or awkward. Okay. <laughs> number three. <laughs> no, no chatty mascots. No, no Your mascot chads has here. to be a real wiener. Yeah. yeah wiener or just like kind of <laughs> awkward in some way, you know. Uh, okay. <laughs> No, no Captain Americas here. No, no. 
uh, a real D-man. There's a Marvel reference There you go. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and uh, the character should be unsophisticated or laid back. So... You, Yurui, uh, and lovable. Okay, well, clearly, yeah, yeah. But I do think that some of them, maybe they're kind of hard to love because some of them are really awkward or just kind of weird, and you're just like, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. Right. So yeah, yeah. you know, my Tai Chan is my Tai Chan. Yeah. I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> well, right, exactly. It's just uh, <laughs> it's hard to love. Yeah. I know. But they're so they're often designed by amateur artists, mm. and uh, sometimes the designs are seen as naive or just not well executed. Like, <laughs> I'm loving it, you know, like sure. a child could have designed this, <laughs> sure. <laughs> and then maybe your answer could be, Well, that's kind of the point, yeah, so okay. yeah, sure, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's supposed to be right. Look, this thing is weak and unimportant. Yes, and <laughs> what do you uh, want? it took me five minutes to come up with. So yeah, 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 exactly. I didn't think about it too hard, but um, this all kind of adds to the appeal, right? Sure. Um, so I've kind of always wondered. Like I've thought, like. Okay, everything in Japan, and I know you and I have talked off the air about this many times, sure. and I think we've probably talked about it on the show um, on Sailor Noob before, too, but um, you, the, Japan has mascots for everything. You know, yes. you, the post office has mascots, you know. Do uh, mascots have mascots? I don't know. It's, but just a, it's just like a guy in a T-pose. I know. Like I just, totally gray. I just saw, I, I didn't have the sound on, but I just saw an ad, a very quick ad for Ikea in Japan. And uh, not only was it showing you, you know, you know, an Ikea kitchen, uh -huh. it also showed you the Ikea Japanese mascot, which I don't know why it's not everywhere. I can't remember his name. Because of, great, great start. Of course, I know, <laughs> but it's you know like the IKEA is from Sweden, Sweden. Yeah. so it's like a Swedish name, like the furniture. So that's why I can't remember his name. Okay, but it's a shark in a business suit with a yellow tie. Okay, all it's right. It's a blue blazer and a yellow tie. Sure. And then whatever his name is, it's Shark Junior. It's his son. <laughs> He's got, wait, he has a son? or He has a, a son. Okay, all right. That's another net mascot. Yes. Okay. So I like the idea of a back... He's shorter. Okay, all right. That, that's cute. Yeah. I like the idea of like a backstory for the for the mascot, a father that we never see. This is Shark Ooh. Jr., but he's always worried about pleasing Shark Sr. You know, I He's would, never going to measure up to Shark Sr. There's no way. I would not be surprised if that already exists. Yeah. Because a lot of them, you know, as part of their charm, have backstories and stuff like that and was, like wikipedia pages <laughs> like long wikipedia pages the the blockbuster movie jaws was a blockbuster everywhere right but did the japanese like jaws that's kind of, that's a question for me i guess i'll give you an answer I for that in the future would honestly not i think they probably liked yeah, it i gotta figure out the answer to that one yeah i i think that's probably a very strong yes would be my guess then but. you have a jaws the shark mascot uh -huh. I want to see the mascot for Michael Caine. Once we get to Jaws okay. 3D, we get farther down the road. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So just like I, I am a mascot Very, representation of Michael Caine. I'm thinking he's got a big, like a Mardi Gras head. Of course. He's got a big, the curly, the curly hair. blonde hair and the glasses. And he's okay. like, it's up title. All right, everyone. I'm Michael Caine. <laughs> He just has a sign. <laughs> yeah, it's like sure. around his just neck. Just hangs it around his neck. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, think, people, I think that people works. Get it. People yeah, get it. exactly. <laughs> um, so there have been some. There's some theories as to why um, mascots in general are so popular, not just um, Yurichara. Yeah. And um, I've seen this in a couple of places, but it sounds like um, they're saying that the Japanese people ha um, have a, you know, long history, largely due to Shintoism and yokai, of uh, a love of non-human characters. 
and a lot of non-human characters. Okay. Like, uh, you know, talking yeah. about... They're comfortable with that. ...polytheism and stuff like that. Sure. And there are um, actually some yokai who have you know, uh, character who are characters, you know, like, uh, Kappa and Tanuki are very popular. There's a lot of, um, uh, Yuruchara characters who are, that are Kappa, like a lot of them. Okay. So, um, you know, Hmm. um, and so this has been around for a really long time, right? So it's hard to kind of pinpoint when did it all start and everything. And I would even, I mean, this is not the same thing. So never, never mind. But um, back in uh, 1998, um, <laughs> this is so I know that's not that long ago. No, no. I thought you were gonna say like in the Nihon Shoki, uh, the. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess uh, I. This is somewhat related, but not completely related, right? Like I think Japan likes telling stories with images, so <laughs> I I like. And I'm not saying that other cultures don't like doing that, yeah. but I just think that there is a that has been around in Japanese culture for a really long time. Yeah, for sure. Like uh, what I think of woodblock prints, you mm-hmm. know, and and stuff like that. And so I think that you could almost possibly connect that to this, you know, in we ever some talk, ways. Yeah. Do we ever talk about like um, when the printing press, you know, was really uh, put into wide use in Japan? I don't think ever have because it could but i know that like the you know they didn't have like books and like you know right printing presses and and so like i don't know like it's sometimes it's easier to tell a story or to represent something in an image right when you can't just you know run it off in in a bunch of german <laughs> <laughs> right and the german right. like those words are like this long right <laughs> it's like just, just draw a picture this picture right. is worth one word right exactly german. yeah um but in so one thing that has like when did this everybody everything has a mascot like physical merch and stuff like that when did that really kind of really kick in and one thing that has been cited is in 1998 um nhk you know the the national broadcasting network right um they had a competition to uh, design a character in celebration of um, one of their anniversaries. Um, and it was like a big anniversary. And the winner was, any guesses? It's a very popular character that I'm pretty oh, sure you okay. know. I was going to say like TV head. No. Um, that you may not know is even tangentially. And, and this is a professional design. So it's not technically Yuruchara, but it, it was like... I think it was a professional design. Anyways. Um, Gloomy Bear. Uh, Domo-kun. Oh, Domo-kun. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So um, Domo-kun is the official mascot of NHK and has like, been. Yes. Yes. How is that say TV? He's square, I guess. He's square like a TV. I don't Does know. Does he have something on his head? Does he have like a. No. No. Not all the time anyways. Oh, he's just sometimes like. Sometimes he does. Well, I'm sure he does sometimes. When he's formal. Yeah. yeah right. He, has, he wears a top hat sometimes if he's feeling fancy. <laughs> no, I don't not know. seen that. I don't know. I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but, no, right. Got me. But um, something else that was brought up when I was looking at things is, um, you know, Hello Kitty has been popular since she was first drawn, you know, in Japan and everything and merch everywhere. But. When I was in Japan in the early 2000s, um, and I don't know how, I think this was kind of new-ish, but um, there were, and it wasn't like everywhere, but there were certain places that you went, um, they had Hello Kitty merch just for that area. Like you go and it would be specific to that area. Like Hello Kitty, you go and if maybe some stores in Kyoto were selling some Hello Kitty merch. She, right. she, she'd be in a kimono or she'd look like a geisha, you know, and it would say Kyoto on it and stuff like right. that. And like, I love Hello Kitty. Hello I, Kitty's eating okonomiyaki. Yes. In Osaka. You got it. Um, and <laughs> I want one of those. I, right? That would be amazing. <laughs> so I'm going to Google that really fast. Okay. Um, but I was collecting it. It works. You know, so this kind of idea was 
around even then. And in um, 2008, uh, she became the official uh, amb- tourism ambassador of Japan. I don't know why it took that long, but yeah, in, that, wow, that took in 2008. And kind of the start of the uh, Yuruchara boom um, has been accredited to uh, the mascot uh, Hikonyan, okay. which is the uh, white samurai cat mascot who was created in 2007 to mark the 400th anniversary of the founding of Hikone Castle. Um, and it created a a huge boom of tourism to Hikone and to the castle. Okay. So that was kind of the start of, oh, crap, now we have to do, everybody should do a mascot because it brings tourism and it brings people there. And um, Hikone is where I studied abroad. It worked. Um, But, well. It all worked. True story. (laughs) But I was there before. I was there in 2003 to 2004. Well, it, you know, he that's wasn't... how powerful it is. <laughs> I made it happen. <laughs> um, but, of course, uh, Hiko Nyan. Nyan, of course, is the onomatopoeia that uh, a cat makes. Well, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, there's a story that, uh, so that behind the character, there is a legend concerning E. Uh, now Taka, the uh, third lord of Hikone. Uh-huh. Um so the daimyo was beckoned, beckoned by a white cat to seek shelter from a storm in a temple. And uh, because the cat beckoned him, he was not struck by lightning. Oh. <laughs> so uh, that's pretty lucky. Can a cat? I know cats can go like this. Can, yes. can they go like this? I don't think they can. <laughs> Why is that cat doing this? I, I There's significance around it. I don't. Remember, because it's like different. Or like the cat always yeah. goes, you know, like this. What if it was like? <laughs> oh, like cat's doing it like backwards. Are you this okay? This way, yeah. Somebody help this cat. Oh my God, lightning! <laughs> exactly. That's how I played. True story. <laughs> That's how it happened. I was there. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see here. Um, there in 2010, uh, there started the Yuruchar Grand Prix. And it was an annual event where people got to vote on uh, their favorite uh, Yuruchara character. Okay. Um, I'm not going to guess. <laughs> There's no way I can guess who won. Well, and it's been different every year. So, okay. um, but uh, Hikon Yan won the first year in uh, 2010. And somebody else who I know you've heard of won in 2011. But uh, that was uh, Kumamon. Uh, the, you know, the really cute, um, I'm swear, you know, of Kumamon, he's, he's refreshed by memory. He's the really cute black bear with the huge red, uh, circular cheeks. He's from Kumamoto prefecture. Oh yeah. Yeah. He looks like he'd be hanging out with my Tai Chan. Yes. He looks very happy all the time. Yeah. He looks really happy. (laughs) And, uh, you know, since Kumamon, he, I don't know if he has an email that he answers but okay, well i was gonna send him something but. yeah but he does have a you his own youtube channel okay yeah it, and but like what do you mean by that is it cartoons there or is there like a dude in a suit the, uh, there's a dude in the suit okay yeah right. yeah yeah i Kinda mean what figured. else would it be yeah i suppose <laughs> um and i mean we've seen there's some really uh out there characters and i just i wanted to just kind of talk about a couple i wish i had images that i could show folks who uh, are well, watching we do have but, the ability to do that but yeah next yeah time. i know Here, um, uh, you uh go ahead and then i'll try to uh give oh, a okay. visual to the folks uh so kunamon was the the first one i talked about he's the bear okay, um uh and then uh funashi uh is one of he this character is uh from Funabashi Chiba city in Japan and it's unofficial but it is incredibly popular um and it was cr- created by a citizen in Funabashi and um it's just been all over Japan very popular tv programs commercials you name it 
Um, the character has issued four CD albums, six singles, and DVDs. It starred in its own anime and live-action drama special. <laughs> Um, and headlined their own concert at uh, Budokan. So there you go. <laughs> and, Fudashi live at Budokan. Yeah. And I thought this was interesting. Uh, it's, oh, Fudashi's the one that's running away from the explosion in yes, the, that clip. That's yes, the gif. Yes. Fudashi is neither girl, neither a girl nor a boy, but is a pair. So it, it's non-binary. Um, and it, it's a pair fairy. Excuse me. So it's Nashi means fairy. All right. Uh, and its parents are ordinary pear trees. <laughs> I bet they're proud of Funashi. I think they are. <laughs> uh, Funashi is the fourth of their 274 children. It's a lot of lot of pears. <laughs> That's just fluff, right? <laughs> yes, this there is are... all made up. Okay, okay. This I'm, whole I'm... thing hey, is all made up. Hey, there could be 274 up. other, I don't know. Oh, okay. I see yeah. what you're saying. No, th- th- that's just color. Funashi has an entire Wikipedia page. I believe and you. And it is mostly color. I believe you. So, yeah. Um, apparently, Funashi is also 1,883 years old. <laughs> that pair is right. I know. And uh, apparently also a metalhead. Funashi <laughs> loves metal music. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I also wanted to mention that uh, the Grand Prix is back on this year. Whoa. And uh, that was reported actually really recently by um, the Twitter account Mondo Mascots, which if you're not checking that site out, you should be because they have a lot of really cool images of mascots on there. Anyways. Mm-hmm. There was a two-year break, and it's come back. Um, so my next one is uh, Soft Kurinu, uh, which is for Tokyo Prefecture, and that's K-U-R-I-I-N-U, Kurinu. So um, we all um, know Hachiko, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so Hachiko, the loyal Akita. Yep. Uh, well, forget about that. Yeah. Here comes Soft, <laughs> Soft Carino, which apparently is a swirling, smiling pink poop mm-hmm. because Japan loves the swirly poop. They are so obsessed. <laughs> uh, but it apparently came from Hachiko. That is the origin of Soft Carino. And because this is, it's Hachiko's poop. It's Hachiko's poop. Yeah. And uh, basically, the um, it's a play on words because soft kurimu means soft serve ice cream. What is this? Which a Fairly Brothers movie? Which it looks like. I know. What? And then Inu is dog. So that's, yeah. Um, mm, I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> also, you can't just take a famous character and then... Have like, oh, this is the stub of the carrot that Bugs Bunny ate. I know. It's stubboo. It's it's not great. Uh, but, th- you know. I'm going to vote no on that one. You're, you're voting that down? <laughs> also, what a bear of a costume to have to wear. Very, a lot of these. Very bottom heavy. A lot of these are bears. Um, I'm going to just. A lot of them are literally bears. Th- yes, exactly. Um, Sento-kun, S-E-N-T-O, T-O, excuse me, uh, dash kun because you got to be polite, is from Nara Prefecture. Um, of course, Nara, you've got deer, you got Buddhist temples. So somebody thought, put those two together, you got a Buddha with deer antlers. This guy's way too relaxed looking. And um, a lot of people were like, Oh my God. No. Full-size costume. Yeah. It's... And a lot of folks think it's blasphemous because you're you're taking Buddha Good. and you're putting deer antlers. You know what? On them. Good. Yeah. I'm actually kind of relieved that the Japanese have a line. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> because we talked before on Sailor Noob, the podcast that this is all in support of, that they have things where it's like. Oh, we've, you know, sort of uh, commoditized all the things at the temple. You've got like, oh, there's a mascot that looks like this. And, like, I know it's not the same as what we've got here, 
Yeah. But I'm like, are they really okay with like, where's the line where suddenly it's like, all right, well, we're getting into a little bit of blasphemy, just a little pinch of blasphemy. Yes. So it's good to know that that. That that exists. That exists somewhere. I agree with they you. They can feel shame. <laughs> yes. They feel shame. Yay! Oh, God. Oh, I've got I've got one more to close it out, and I think it's a good one. Um, it is G Ninja from Shiori Chiba Prefecture. So um, basically, uh, it's a. I need a spelling on that. Uh, it is J I N E N J A. Okay. Uh, Ninja. Uh, and. So Shiori is known for uh, Japanese yams, and I guess they thought that's kind of boring. So let's zhuzh it up a little bit. So let's take a uh, yam and a ninja and just jam them together, and then you got Jinenja. All right. And this it is, is the... it is a yam who is a ninja. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> this is the first yeah. one where I'm like, all right, I can see the uh, not yeah. professional element to this. Right. <laughs> this does look a little thrown together. Yes. So, yeah. Um, And there's a backstory behind this, too. This this character, he's, he's a ninja hero who comes from an underground world of Neverland. I don't know. Not the same oh, Neverland. Got- Never Neverland. The blue shark and the and the, and, and shark junior. You got them? Yes. I got from a commercial IKEA. with them. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Oh no. What? What's oh no? A piece of kelp in a bikini. Yep. Yep. There's a piece of kelp All right, with a bikini. We gotta wrap this up. Too. We gotta wrap this story yeah. up. Yeah. Anyway. We're, we're going too far. Okay. So, um, Janenja is is from Neverland, and he has a mission to save his beloved princess, uh, Tororo, which. Uh, Tororo is slimy grated yam. <laughs> Look, he loves her. He loves her. Okay. Very much. So, um, basically from her abductor and he's aided by a kind farmer. So there you go. Um, a whole backstory for, uh, If I was a yam, <clears throat> I wouldn't trust a farmer, you know? <laughs> All farmers are bastards, if you're a man. Oh, well, we, we know this to be true. So. Well, uh, thanks for taking us on that tour of you're things that will never get out of our heads. I know. Um, I want to move on to my portion of this. Yes. And my portion is, we know that on Sailor Noob, am I the titular noob? I think I don't so. want that responsibility. I know. It's really about just sort of learning something about not only a show that we like, but Absolutely. Japanese culture. We're all the noob. There. Gotcha. Everybody's um, a noob here. But there's something specifically that I'm sort of a noob about, and that is like Japanese culture really in general. And so I wanted to take a quiz. Yes. Now, this is an online quiz, but it's been vetted by our Japanese expert and... <laughs> It's not so easy to no. know some of this stuff, uh, some of these Japanese facts. I've been around the block a little bit. I've seen a lot of anime. I got that going for me. Yep. Uh, but I wanted to know how much I really actually knew about Japan generally. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to take a quiz. All right. And we're going to do it in a kind of a game show style. Maybe nice. who wants to be a millionaire? Millionaire. Millionaire. I right? like it. Which is only like a hundred thousand air, but still, it's a lot of money. <laughs> and so I we'll see if no. we can get a, a, a phone a friend or a, what, what do they call it when you take two away? A 50 50, I think. 50 50. A 50 yeah. 50. Yeah. Or an ask the audience. Yes. Uh, so to start off, uh, we'll put our, our uh, quiz on the board. This quiz is from wanderlustco.uk. And it's how well do you know Japan? Uh huh. And I guess we'll just there's no point in uh, in in holding back here. Let's start off with uh, question number one. Let's do it. Why don't you give us question number one? Okay, I will. Uh, Japan is made up of islands. How many islands does Japan have in total? Okay, so they always talk about the four main islands. Yes. And then I think there's like a couple others that you could. They're like Pluto. They're like dwarf islands, mm-hmm. but they're still pretty big. Mm-hmm. But I know that there's a lot of islands. It's like an archipelago. Yes. So 
six is too few. 380 is a lot. 5,000? 6,000? Um, I think there's a lot, but what's an island, really? Like a little a toll? <laughs> How about, I'm going to say 380. Oh! Yeah, there's... Uh, there's 6,852 islands. I know, Damn. I know. Do they all have names or do they just get to letters at some point? I think they all have names. Although, I mean, I guess... I don't know. A hundred percent. Like that's a lot. That is a lot. Like what like you were saying, what constitutes an island? Like right. there's a park in Portland that is just right. in between an intersection. Yeah, so. sure. Can you imagine? I'm being sure the... it's more than that. Yeah, right. What is what was what was the intersection park called again? I Portland rem- listeners, let us know. I can't remember. We've been there. We have. We went what? I've stepped on it, but <laughs> <laughs> all right, next question. All right. What is a traditional Japanese inn called? Okay, I th- I know this one because mm-hmm. it's not capsule or capsule. Right. Why did I say it like that? <laughs> I don't know. You're I know what to... an onsen is. Yeah. I'm not sure what a hanok is, uh-huh. but I know that it's a ryokan. Yes. Good job. All right. Is that is the picture? Is that accurate? Yeah, the the picture is accurate. Okay. Um, so Sometimes they just throw a picture up there and it does. They don't no, do it. no, it is. It's a it's a traditional in Rokans have uh, tatami mats, mm. uh, and um, and they often have onsen. Um, so you can oh, so it could be both. It could be both, but see, like, so sometimes they just A-N-B. have um, they have like your own onsen bath. Like you can get a nicer room. That has your own bath that you don't have to share with everyone. Okay. So yeah, or you there they'll have an onsen that everybody can go to too. So okay. Um, question number three. Yes. I'm uh, just one for two. Yes. <laughs> uh, we all know Tokyo's the largest city in terms of population, but where is the second biggest? Oh. Or which, what city is the second biggest? It's... Well, we know that Kyoto was the former capital. Yep. But we always talk about Osaka being the Chicago to the New York. So I think mm-hmm. it's Osaka. I'm wrong. It, yeah. It's Yokohama. I know. What's I... up in Yokohama? <laughs> it's just big. It's really big. Industrial. You know? It's it's industrial. Um. They have the largest um, Chinatown in Japan, in Yokohama. Oh, okay. Yeah. So diverse population, too. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a port city. It's actually, once they opened up Japan, a lot of people came in through Yokohama. Right, right. So. A lot of Dutch people living there? <laughs> Great question. Any wooden shoes? <laughs> Uh, all right. Question number four. Four. Japan's total population is approximate, approximately 127 million, but which European country is similar in size according to land mass? Just the land mass. Some of these questions, they, they try to make it confusing. When you're a square, mm-hmm. you're a square all the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that... <clears throat> that uh, just just uh, uh, in square footage or square miles or meters, it takes up a lot. So I don't think it's France or Spain. Hmm. The United Kingdom is an island nation like Japan. Right. Japan is longer, but the United Kingdom's kind of squat and fat. And Germany, Germany's got a couple bites taken out of it. It's probably the UK, but I'm going to say Germany. Yes. You're right. All right. <laughs> you can't. I know. I know square footage. Uh, number five. Number five. Before Tokyo, Japan had several other capital cities, oh, which is the most recent previous capital. The hmm. most recent. Um, this is a recent history question. Mm-hmm. And when they mean recent, they just mean the last hundred or... The one before. So, right, right. Yeah. Wherever they were keeping the emperor last. Exactly. You got it. <laughs> um, all those are pretty important cities. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just going to go uh, for where the Okonomiyaki is the best and say Osaka. Nope, it's Kyoto. Yep. It's Kyoto. Um, this is really moving around there a lot for a yeah. while, though. 
Well, you know, actually, it's so before Kyoto was in Nara. So, yeah. Um, the, um, so, yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting because it, that it's just wherever the emperor is, even when, like, the emperor doesn't have power. Sure. That's where the capital is. So sure. I think that that's really interesting. And well, I guess, I, yeah. I guess there is a photographic clue if you, uh, Number oh, five. Should I know? What, oh, okay. This is the uh, Golden Temple. The and oh. King. What is it? King King Koji. I. It's Kin. Kin is gold. I can't remember exactly what it is. I gotta start looking at um, the clues. But I've I've been there. It's really cool looking. Um, there's also a silver, um, temple, but I haven't been there. Okay. So yeah, but it's it's really well known. Anyways. Okay. The Silver Temple is, is worth not as much not as the Golden as much, One, but obviously. still very beautiful. Yes. <laughs> All right, number six. How tall is the iconic Mount Fuji? Okay, so right out, feet is right out. Uh, we got to go by meters, right? Otherwise, what are we doing here? Um, so I'm going to go by meters. And it's tall, but it's not super tall. It seems tall. It seems, you know, like a, like a Mount Hood. Sort of height, right? So Am I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to say uh, 2,800, 2,893. Oh, it makes it, it's all the way to 3776. It's really, That's pretty really tall. tall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mount Fuji is on my bucket list. I don't know if you know this. <gasps> Look out Mount Fuji. But yeah, I, I want to, I want to climb Mount Fuji. That's what I want to do. Um, How are you going to do that? <laughs> I just, mean, you can do anything. You 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 go up and you walk up. No, and how are you going to do that? I can do it. <laughs> okay. Um, you can get like, uh, I read this really cool travel log story um, with like a collection of stories at one point, And like there, you can get like a travel stick and you they, they have little places you can check in along uh, the mountain. And uh, you can get, get them. Get stamped. Mm-hmm. Branded. <laughs> stamped. Okay. At each one. All right. So anyways. I look forward to, to seeing your stick. Okay. Uh, how about number seven? Yeah, seven. Uh, few original castles remain from the Edo period, uh, you know, which was 1603 to 1868. How many still exist today? Oh, boy. C are the longest answer. Let's say 19 of them. I'm wrong. 12 of them. Yes. Is there a significance in that number or is it just... It was a long time ago. I think just a lot of castles were destroyed. Yeah. Um. So it being a castle town is a big deal mm-hmm. in Japan. So, you know, having studied abroad in a I castle town. some towns wish that their castles weren't destroyed. Yes, I think so. All we got is this crappy mascot. <laughs> uh, how about number eight? Yes. Kyoto is famous for its stunning geisha, but what does the word geisha mm, actually translate to? Interesting. Interesting. Mm. So, um, using logic, yep. I don't think it's a doll performer. Everything else is about a person and one's about a doll, and that's a little weird. And then it's person of art or woman of art. So I think it's art, but is it person or woman? And that, I'm going to uh, love to hear the explanation of why I'm wrong, but I'm going to say it's person of art. You it's are person correct. Of art. Yes. I logic that one right down to the ground. <laughs> I'm really glad you didn't go with doll performer. First time, <laughs> well, I think so. that that's their like, what's something really insulting? Uh, Wanderlust staff. Do- nice one, Jerry. <laughs> doll performer. Can always count on Jerry. Uh, how about number nine? Yeah. Japan is an up and coming hiking haven. But which of these timeless mm. walking trails is over 1,000 years old? Interesting. If I could read those signs, I would have. I'm going to get my phone out. <laughs> you would probably have a clue. Yes. Uh, it's a trail. Well, one of these answers has trail in it. But that seems like a, that's a, that's a trick. Huh. Um, I'm going to say the Shimana Mikaido. Oops, it's no, it's the Kumano Kodo. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Um, 
I and it's a thousand years old. Wow. Yeah, I don't know a lot about this. This might be. Um, I do know that there are, you know, some trails that were just. This might be the trail I'm, that I'm thinking of that was, you know, this is just like this is where the merchants went, and this is, you know, and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, some trails have been around that long. Um, okay. Uh, number ten. What is the top operational speed of the Shinkansen, aka the bullet train? Mm, this is a good one. It is um, so it's not two hundred, it's not four hundred. Um, I remember hearing this one time, but I heard it a long time ago, and maybe mm-hmm. they've made it faster. I think three twenty is that's pretty fast. So I'm going to say two sixty and be conservative. Don't ever be conservative. Listen, listen to me. <laughs> Don't ever be conservative. Bet it all. Just lay down on those tracks. Wow, 320 kilometers per hour. It's really fast. And you don't feel it either. I've only was on it once, but you, you literally do not feel it. How long does it take to get to reach that speed? I don't know the answer That's all to that magnets, question. Right? Yeah. 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 Amazing. Oh, so um the the trail it was a pilgrimage trail that's what i the word oh, i was trying to thousand pull thousand miles that's out. got a that's thousand got a, years old yeah or a thousand years old yeah yeah, yeah. A thousand miles <laughs> maybe it is i don't know Learn. so well maybe they like the proclaimers maybe. uh let's talk about number 13 or to, sorry number 11 uh japan is renowned for its incredible food which city is nicknamed quote the kitchen of japan that's a great question i'm going to have to go with osaka on that one you are I watched Correct. enough YouTube videos to get that one right. Lots of good food in Let's Osaka. Let's see if this applies to the number 12. Which quintessential Japanese dish actually originates from Portugal? Um, I believe, and I don't know if this is right or not, um, but I believe that it's tempura. And that I'm right. You are right. And you're going to tell me why. Um, they're like they're frying things. They are frying things, and I also can tell you that tempura is uh, written in katakana. Oh, right, of course. Yeah. So you know the language that the writing language they use for yeah. a- adopted words. So um, I thought they're frying things. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I think it is. They're they're frying things, yeah. honestly. But um, it's a great idea. Yeah. Well, this food tastes great. Hey, roll it in bread. Yeah. Exactly. What if we shocked the bread? <laughs> Oh, well, that's panko. Uh, let's do number 13. All right. Which sacred animal is known for wandering through Nara Park? I'm pretty sure this is deer. Yeah, you got it. And check out the um, YouTube videos on that sometime. Yes. These deer, these deer, they get kind of feisty. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They they want their one or, senbei. One or two bows. And I, all right, I'm done bowing. <laughs> Give me that senbei. Uh, 14. All right. Hokkaido's red crown cranes are iconic. In which part of the island can they be seen all year round? Now, this, that, I have watched a video about this, but I, I don't remember it. So that's not going to help me. Um, I think it's interesting that there's one answer that's like, huh, it's not in Hokkaido, which seems suspicious. Why are you there? Yeah. <laughs> and you'd think marshland cranes, right? But I think that something so beautiful is probably endangered. Which means it's in a protected national park. I'm going to say Akan National Park. I'm wrong. It was the marshland. Yeah. See, I went with, I picked your answer too. Yeah. Like that was the one I thought. And yeah, you should have gone with marshland. You, your gut instinct was right. There was, yeah. Um, there's, I can't remember now, but it's one of those um, YouTube videos with a soft voiced British man telling you about stuff. And I watched it about um, the... Uh, the Snows of Japan, I think it's called, maybe okay. something like that. Uh, or that's a Ethan Hawke movie or something. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, but it was all about um, the wildlife of Hokkaido and how yeah. they have to survive, you know, in like the sort of not, not that hot summers, but then the really cold winters. And okay. it was like monkeys and stuff. And it was really cool. Awesome. And speaking of which, how about 15? Yeah. In which prefecture can you find the hot spring bathing Japanese maca, a.k.a. snow monkey? If it's snow, it's Nagano. And now you know. You were right. Yes. Great logic there. Um, 37 feet snowfall. <laughs> whatever, they got, whatever they got. You see the roadways, you know, and the That's cars. That's in Hokkaido, are going through, though. And, I don't. Oh. Where is Nagano? It's up north. I don't. 
is it in Hokkaido though? I um, no possible way to know. Number sixteen. Hey. Let's see Number can... sixteen. In which region <laughs> would you find the city of Sendai? Uh, okay, that is. Which region mm-hmm. is Honshu an entire region? Is it? No, that's an island. It, I don't think it's a Honshu region. It's not. Chikoku's an island too. Have I eliminated two just by knowing geography? Possibly. Uh, I'm gonna say Chugoku. No, it's Tohoku. Yes, it's Tohoku. Crap. <laughs> uh, That's another industrial uh, area, right? Sort of um, I don't know the an- if that if I don't know the answer. Well, let's possibly not, let's not misinform people. <laughs> uh, all right, seventeen. 17. Can you identify the this famous Japanese castle that is pictured in the photo above? Oh, that's a pretty castle. It is a pretty castle. I know that Osaka has a pretty castle. But that's why they put that answer there. But I have no other guess, so I'm <laughs> going to say Osaka Castle. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Give us a fact about Osaka Castle. Oh, God. I You would ask me that. I've been there. Right. That is a fact. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I it's close to some water and I like a river or something, some body of water, and I was on a, a boat that went by Osaka Castle and I've also um gone to it and you can like you can go inside and stuff like that, but it's nice. Yeah. Get a nice view. Number eighteen. All right, another photo thing can you identify this japanese city garden oh. where is this i know because i've seen a lot of youtube videos okay i don't think that it's you know park in tokyo i don't I'm not familiar with mino or yokohama as much it looks like something a beer company would pay for. I think it's Odori Park in Sapporo. <gasps> oh my goodness! And you, you think that I don't know how to take tests? I know how to take I, tests. No, I never said that. I oh, okay. never said that about you. So that's like, um, it's like a really long park. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is a really long park. Look, you know, people have called me a genius. I don't know if I would take that title. But um, Central Park is a really long park. Well, in Central, a big yeah, but city. it's a really wide park as well. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, okay. It's like a mall, basically. It is like a mall. Yeah. Uh, I also, uh, Nagano is uh, on okay, Honshu. Okay, she had to totally, she had to prove I did. that she was right. I did. All right, 19. <laughs> 19. Another photo uh, question. In which Japanese town would you find this Buddha statue? Oh, boy. It's, it's a, not Harajuku. It's a very famous statue. I want to say Nara, but I seem to, I think I heard of the Gifu Buddha, Gifu, Kamakura, you know, sometimes. Look, there's a reason I won't accept the title of genius from people, because <laughs> uh, I know they're wrong. Oh, come on. So tell me about Kam- Kamakura. Um, that's, I a, mean, that's, a, that's a big deal. It is a big deal. And like this. That's a period? It is a period. That, that, that's um, a dude? <laughs> But so this statue is massive, uh, and I don't know if you can. There, it's not for you can't tell by scale, right? Um, but it is. Let's see if I can find it. It it is um, uh, forty three uh, point eight feet tall. Wow. Um, so it's it's pretty tall and it weighs approximately 103 tons. Um, and it's been around for a long time, possibly. Uh, according to temple records, it says 12, uh, 1252, but I'm not sure if we can corroborate that. But that is supposedly correct. Okay. Speaking of years, question number 20. Yes. When did the beloved Studio Ghibli Museum in Mitaka open? Beloved. Okay. Let's leave the adjectives out of this. Whoa. Um, Whoa. Step back. <laughs> 98. 
is possible, but I, that's got to be too early, right? And then 98 to so three years, two years, four years. Well, they space these questions out. Yeah. Oh, what do I want to do? Right? Test wanna, for a living? Do you want to do 2001? I'm right. Oh. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's it. <laughs> and I'm like, I was like, why the heck didn't I go there when I was in Japan? Oh, yeah. 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 So, anyways. I guess it's not beloved to you. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. Um, <laughs> 21. Can you identify this bamboo forest? No. But, I, but I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess. Do you want to do 50-50? Uh, so, or... Oh, that's right. I haven't taken any of my things. No. Uh, Akigahara, it's not that. That's the scary suicide forest. Um, yeah, I'm going to 50-50. Okay. So is it um, Ogasawara or Arashiyama? I think it's Ogasawara. I'm wrong. Arashiyama. What, mm -hmm. what, so does that mean like bamboo forest? Um, Yama means mountain. Oh, okay. I'm not sure what Arashi means. So where is uh, this uh, located? Great question. Oh, you right. would ask me that. Uh, it's located. <laughs> Uh, in the western the outskirts of, of Kyoto. There you go. There you and go. the district also includes the mountain across the Oi River. There you go. That's which probably why. Which is a why. backdrop to the district. Mm. There's a lot of bamboo forests in Kyoto. And there's monkeys there. There's monkeys all over Japan, isn't there? Yep. If you don't yep. like monkeys, don't go to Japan. That's Here's right. Here's the last question. Finally, can you identify this Japanese city from its picture? Again, no. Um, <laughs> uh, do you want to pull gotta, the audience? It, no, it's got a, <laughs> it's got an Eiffel Tower. Yeah, yeah. Um, boy, these are all, they really dug down for this last question, didn't they? They did. I'm not going to disagree with you on that one. You know, the only city that I really, hmm, what is, is this a water park? What's here in the, or just a park? That is a really great question. You know what? The, the Sapporo thing worked out. Uh -huh. This this looks like a park that uh, a, a motorcycle company would pay for. <laughs> I think it's Kawasaki. No, I should have picked Nagoya. <laughs> That's the only city I actually knew. I know. <laughs> I didn't know it well enough, though. Uh, well, I, I got 10 out of 22. <laughs> so Honestly, not bad, I'd say. So, I, you know, they had some tough questions, so... They absolutely did. Yeah. Well, still a noob. It's okay. And, and thank know... God, too. <laughs> We'd be out of a show. Uh, you know, if I, I wasn't one. I'm a noob in a lot of ways, too. I'm still learning stuff, so. Well, uh, I think that about wraps it up for our show this week. Do you want to tell people what's coming up on our next episode? Because we didn't do that. Oh, that's on our last episode. right. We did not do that on our last episode. So and... here's the official word on what's coming up. And um, it's at the bottom of the script that we're sharing right now. Oh, it is. Yeah. Well, look because at that. somebody's prepared. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Who's a genius now? All right. Uh, yeah, we're talking about episode number 141, which is... Koi no Arashi, Minako no Futamata Dai, oh my gosh, Dai Sakusen. Uh, so, which means the English translation is Storm of Love, Minako's Grand Two Timing Plan. And the English title is Double Trouble. It's a Monaco episode. It's a Monaco episode. Awesome. Yes. All right. Well, yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, and Me can't too. wait to talk about that. And yes. Double Trouble? Can't tell if that's a good title or not. I don't know if it is or not, but, um, but I'll, it's, uh, I've seen clips of this oh. around the internet. Okay. So, you know. Sounds solid. I think I might have seen clips of it too. Mm -hmm. uh, so, looking forward to that. Uh, and that's it for our show this week. Uh, yes. Thanks for joining us and thanks to our patrons for your support. Uh, you know, on our Patreon, we have just finished our coverage of the live action Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon. Uh, what a ride that was. Fantastic. Uh, it was a real Karari time. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and so, if it you want to watch those episodes, <laughs> 
Uh, you can on the internet if you want to listen to our episodes and our coverage, uh, featuring coverage pretty similar to our Sailor Moon coverage or Sailor Noob coverage, uh, where we talk about the episode, and then we talk about an element of Japanese culture, and just kind of like fan geek out about the yes. live action show, which is way better than anybody uh, has ever told me about. Uh, so now I'm telling you, <laughs> uh, you can find that on our Patreon. Uh, now that we're wrapping that up, we're continuing to do our animatification shows, and we're also starting a new series where we talk about... Neon Genesis Evangelion. Yeah. Which probably won't be quite as fun as watching the live action Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon was. <laughs> but we're doing it anyway. And yeah. to make it more fun, we're talking about the philosophical and psychological concepts that are in the series. Yeah. Uh, the entire thing is called Beyond Good and Ava. And it starts soon. So join us then. Uh, next week on our Patreon, we are restarting our animatification. And yes. we're talking about the anime Penguin Drum. Mm-hmm. which is a pick from one of our uh, princess patrons, Annie. So thanks for that pick. Looking forward to watching Thank Penguin you, Drum. Uh, you can find all of this stuff on our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Sailor Noob if you want to support us there. Go do that. Uh, you can also, if you want to support us, give us a tip at ko-fi or coffee, K-O-F-I dot com forward slash Just Enough Trope. And we'd love to have you. And we've got a Discord as we well. Do. There's a link uh, on our About page uh, right here on Twitch. If you want to join our Discord, that's free. Don't forget to subscribe here on Twitch before you go. Um, also, I stream uh, video games uh, here on Twitch uh, every 12 p.m. Central uh, weekdays uh, for my laser lunch hour. And also every Thursday on Twitch at 8 p.m. Central, we talk about new episodes of Star Trek. So come join us for that. All of that's right here on twitch.tv forward slash Just Enough Trope. That's it. For, oh, do you want to say something? Yeah. Go for it. I think you should tell uh, everybody who's watching what game you're playing right now because I think they might oh. be interested. Yeah. Um, so I was just playing a game called uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, mm-hmm. which is a, a first-person game set in modern Tokyo, and you're busting ghosts. Lots of yokai. And Yeah. What's cool about it is it they have yokai that we've talked about on yes. our podcast, and also it's got... Um, uh, it basically it takes place in like downtown Tokyo around Shibuya Station, and I mean I don't know maybe you could tell me, but it's very accurate to like the street layouts, mm-hmm. and so it's kind of like a walking tour while ghosts are trying to chop your head off. So yeah. it's fun. Uh, and then I just started playing um, a new game, a Yakuza game, uh, like a Dragon Ishin, which is set in Tosa, which is on Shikoku. Okay. Uh, so far, so good. And it's a PlayStation. Oh, I was pronouncing everything so so right up to this point. But it's a PlayStation game. <laughs> and it's an action game. And it's based on the life of Ryom, Ryomu, Ryomu Sakamoto. Okay. Who is a Japanese uh, revolutionary and hero. And, oh, yeah. Uh, I remember you telling me about this. And yeah. it's kind of like a walking tour of uh, – actually, I'm in Kyoto now in the game. So okay. it's sort of like a you know look at the uh, mid-19th century era of Japan uh, right before the Meiji era began. So, awesome. Samurai sword one hand, got a gun in the other hand. <laughs> so doing it like that. So, yeah. Uh, so join me for all that times because it's not all Japanese stuff, but it's fun to do Japanese stuff. So yeah. do it there. Um, I think that's it unless you've got anything else. Don't, don't jump me again. No, no, that's, I'm good. Okay, mouth mouth closed. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're pulling into, we're pulling into the dock. No, we were on the dock. We're getting back on board. (laughs) I don't know, we're coming to the dock. And that's it for us for this episode of Shore Leave. Uh, We'll see you next week, we'll see you next week when we make up for another episode of Sailor Noob. Bye. Bye.